What's up everybody, I'm Olian back for another video and in this one we're going to take a quick look at Ableton Live 11's warp modes for drums. Since in house music we sample drums, use groove loops all the time, it's kind of helpful to understand these uh, warp modes to make some cool good decisions because they can have quite an impact on the sound quality of your productions. So yeah, let's jump right in and kind of understand what warping does in general. Let's listen to this house groove for example playing at 125 BPM. If we want to change the tempo of this house groove, let's say we want to reduce the tempo without changing the pitch, this will kind of drag these drums apart. So kind of create some, some excess space. If we were to say we want to slow this down, we would have to move each kick drum a little bit, right? Which will create some space and a little gap. And this gap has to be filled somehow or left empty, whatever you want to decide. But basically the different warp algorithms, what they do is decide how are we going to handle um, the space being created if we slow down the sample. Similarly, if you speed up the sample, the kick and the, the elements are going to move closer together. So you have to remove something and then you will have to decide, okay, but what do I want to remove and why? So that's basically what these algorithms have to decide. And in the case for drums, you have this beach beats option, which is meant as an algorithm for drums, which gives you some options down here to decide how are we going to handle these things. So these are mainly focused on slowing down samples because they're focused on looping. So let's say we have these three options. This one basically says, let's do nothing, just chop you are my uh, chop the audio into certain segments and um, when a segment is over just don't do anything with it just leave some space and the segments are kind of decided up here transients would be the main go-to thing so a transient is if you have a, a certain drum or something you have some amplitude and then it reduces it will tell you that there's something happening like an impact of a drum or something like this and life will kind of recognize these transients and chop your audio into uh, this uh, into these transients accordingly. But you can also kind of use time signature based chopping and say, let's say you have a very clear hi-hat pattern, which is playing 16, 16th notes. You can also just pick the 16 and have it chop it in this, um, in this manner. Usually I would stick to transients because it works quite well. So now that we have this, alg this algorithm, algorithm that says, okay, just leave space after every segment. Let's see what happens if we reduce the tempo by quite a lot. So let's go like below 100, which is a lot obviously, but yeah. You can tell the audio is like cho having chops, like dropping out because we're saying, hey, uh, just cut it in these things and then just do nothing with it. Also a little fine trick that probably most of you already know, in this option, you can use it kind of as a gate. Even if you have the normal tempo, 125, you can say, okay, make every segment shorter. Can even turn the house room like this into like a little Sweely styled uh, minimal house groove. Okay, cool. So we were saying, if we turn this down below 100 quite a bit, we have these dropouts. So let's say I don't want these cuts. I want the audio to go all the way through. I have two options. I can use loop forward, which basically says, pick something around the end of uh, the transient and then loop it and play it forward. So we're kind of filling in the space in this way. So obviously this doesn't sound great and Oh, maybe it sounds good in a certain context, but here you can really hear how you have like these repetition things going on. Especially here, it's doing like shh. Because it's looping something forward, playing it forwards many times. So mm, just for you to understand, even if you change just two or three BPM, it's going to do that a little bit. And maybe you will hear some of that. And if you uh, have a, a drum loop with some very nice reverb, maybe that's not the algorithm you want to use. Second options would be loop forward and backwards. 
So instead of just playing something, getting apart and playing it forward and forward and forward, it's going to play it forward and backward to kind of even things out a little bit. Let's give it a listen. Okay, so this really depends on what kind of material you're using. Here we have this drum groove, but let's say we have this, this conga groove, for example. Drums. Choppy. You hear these little loops. hear some of the backwards moving movement so yeah if we give it give it a quick listen in the less extreme tempo you can still hear the chopping we're at 118 bpm now so here i love like forwards and backwards the most um Exactly. Okay. So now, um, some of the reasons you have these different options, let's say we have just this kick loop and there's a lot of space. So in this case, I would recommend using just an option that doesn't do any looping since, um, well, it might not matter that much because it's going to loop some empty space, but maybe there's a little tail of, of something behind it or not will make a difference. I would recommend to you just give it a quick listen. It's different for every drums, uh, drum, but um, here, if you have a kick, uh, if you have a kick, you can really turn it down and it's not gonna make that much of a difference. But for the conga loop, for example, Also, if you're doing the gate thing, um, you might want to consider having kind of clear, clear transients because here you have this main conga and then a little quiet one playing in a vac. And you can hear that it's also not working as nicely as one might expect. While on this drum groove over here, really doing its job because it has pretty clear transients. Okay, so now let's say we have this for drums. We have complex as well. And sometimes you might think, well, complex uses more CPU. Maybe it's always the best. Let's give, a, give it a listen. I have to be honest, usually on drums, I would say beats works better than complex unless you have something very busy, which is almost like a track with like melodic stuff and elements going over different parts. For example, if you have one drum with a very clear transient and then another one, which is slightly longer crossing across several transients, it can kind of get messed up and complex might work better in this case. Um, let's just listen to this one and compare it at like, I don't know, let's do something kind of realistic, 121 and do complex. I have to adjust this. So if you listen carefully, this is going to be tough on just through YouTube and this kind of stuff. But if you listen carefully, I feel like almost always complex make things, makes things a little bit less sharp and the high end is less clear and it just kind of reduces it a bit. And the kicks usually kind of get distorted and a little bit weird. So. Here the kick is almost tight. You get some rhythm and stuff artifacts, but sound wise, I think, well, I mean, the hi hats coming in, it's so obvious. Complex. 
kick gets a bit boomy. Hi, happy boost. Okay. Um, that gets also very obvious when you're using just a kick, for example. I showed you, let's just do loop, no looping, go very slow, 92 BPM, kick sounds somewhat all right. Let's switch to complex. Sounds like a hard style drum. It's kind of dragging things apart. I mean, always is it uh, an artistic decision, but just so you hear what's going on. All right, let's compare one more complex versus drums. Here, for example, let's go to the original tempo, 125. So there's a lot of room, some short transients, some fizzly stuff. Let's turn this down to 116 or 113 even. In drums, beats, I'd say, okay. Some dropouts with this algorithm. Okay. Okay, now we have this. This sounds okay. Let's compare it to complex. In this case, I kind of like the complex algorithm more because there isn't so much of a kick and no not much low end and it kind of handles this the the consistency of the of the sound a little bit better because it's very um, how you say per, not persistent but it goes all the way through and drums is better at like recognizing uh, transients chopping the drums adjusting it re preserving the groove a little bit maybe but the moment you have something which becomes almost like a pad in some way just with high frequencies and some transients um, you might want to consider using complex and use your ears and I I can promise you does seem a bit nitpicky, nitpicky, but at the end of the day, um, sp spending some attention or paying some attention to this can really have a big impact on your production overall. And also, I mean, this is just regarding loops. Sometimes you might warp something in your simpler or sampler. Often for drums, if you do your own drums, obviously we just use the samples and this kind of stuff. But I think many people use some loops, groove loops, conga loops, percussions, and it might make sense to make some, get some extra attention because later on you're like, oh my, my high end doesn't sound great. How can I mix it? Maybe distort it. And it kind of already happened in the warping stage that um, some quality was lost. So yeah, leave a like, leave a comment, leave a, a sub, whatever you feel like. And also you can reach me on Instagram if you have any questions or stuff like this. Uh, this is my profile and uh, you can reach me there just send me a message you will also find some free stuff over there all right have a good one see you next time